Welcome to today's video. Today's video, I'm gonna be reviewing the new Alienware X17 laptop. Now, normally on this channel, I do videos on electric vehicles. And if you're watching this and you're not interested in electric vehicles, well, check out my channel, maybe click subscribe to it, because if you're interested in gaming laptops, Electric cars are big gadgets on wheels and you might find that interesting. Now, why am I reviewing a gaming laptop? Well, today, I thought I'd review another battery piece of technology and this is a battery powered computer, so why not review it? Now, I've bought this for editing, but I'm gonna be showing benchmarks on what this is like for gaming and what this will be like in real life for you. I've also tested some VR on it. I've timestamped this video in case you really don't wanna see what's in the box, but don't worry, I've increased the speed of this unboxing as much as I can, so people who enjoy seeing grown men open boxes of stuff can still enjoy it in all its glory. Now, the only thing I'm really not happy with on this Alienware laptop is if you go for the 3080 graphics card like I have, you will get the old style power brick, which is literally a brick. It is huge. If you go for the other configurations, the 3070, you'll get the new redesigned brick, which is much smaller. Now the packaging in this, to be fair, is a real work of art. It's really nice to design, and it's in this new eco packaging. Now you of course want to know the spec that I've gone for, and if you just skip the unboxing, you won't know that I went for the 3080 graphics card, and I went for that graphics card as it was the best graphics card you could fit in the X17, and I don't like buying new and then finding out a couple of years later what I've bought is outdated very quickly. So I always try and buy the most expensive and the best item I can so I can keep it for many, many years so it's more sustainable for me. So I went for the 3080 graphics card, and then you're gonna say, obviously you went for the i9 chip. No, I didn't, I actually went for the i7 chip. And the reason I went for the i7 over the i9 is because the i9 chip was quite a lot more money, and I figured that the i9 chip would probably get a lot hotter in this laptop chassis than the i7, and probably firmly restricted and I won't get the same speed as I would out of the i7 anyway so I went for the i7 I also went for the standard screen which is just a 1080 screen with the lowest refresh rate they did because I thought for editing on the go I'm not really going to be able to sort of check the 4k footage greatly in a hotel room or wherever I am so I went for the standard screen and if I'm ever going to be doing something high detail 4k I'll buy a new 4k monitor for the office and plug it into one of the HDMI's now the reason I went for the x17 over the X15 is I wanted a larger screen for editing on the go. So if I'm in a hotel room, using a workflow on a 15 inch screen on an editing suite is a pain in the neck. So I went for a 17 inch screen and if you're gaming on it, you'll probably find the same unless you're plugging it into an external monitor. The other reason I went for the 17 is if you look at the cooling of the M series laptops, the M15 and the M17, there's better cooling in the bigger chassis cases. So I thought there'd be better air airflow and you'd get more, you know, less restriction air air airflow. The reason I didn't upgrade to those 4K screens, like I mentioned, was mainly price. But if you are looking for a Dell laptop, make sure you scour the internet for discount codes. Now I got 20% off this laptop, including the Dell rewards package. So I also got some points, which I ended up buying this Dell mouse, which we'll move on to in a minute. But make sure you look for codes. There's always at least 10% codes available, but there's often 15% codes. And occasionally, if you're really, really lucky and time it right, and you're willing to wait long periods of time, you can often find 20% discount codes. Now, this is my first gaming laptop, and compared to my old EliteBook HP, it has completely blown me away the amount of RGB you get in this. Now, it's got a full RGB keyboard, and it's per key RGB, which means you can set each individual key a different color, or you can have this rainbow effect that I've currently got going over the laptop. Now, it is a little bit dim, it's not very bright, and you can't see it, for example, when I'm talking here in the video at the moment, and it's a bit faded. You've also got the RGB alien head power button, which you can change color, or it can change color with the state of the battery, or if you're plugged in. And because I've got the 3080 graphics card, I have the RGB trackpad as well on this. Now the RGB doesn't stop there. You've also got the RGB alien head at the back of the laptop, and you've also got the RGB Tron bar at the bottom of the laptop. Now the Tron bar and the alien head at the back, for me don't make that much sense for most people because most people never see them because they'll never see the back of your laptop because it's gonna mainly be up against a wall. However, for me, I'm actually gonna turn the laptop round 
especially when I'm filming videos like this or doing my usual electric car videos. So you can see that Tron bar and you can see that alien head and I can make them do effects for the videos just because I think they'll look good as a background shot for the video. Apart from the Tron bar at the back, you've also got most of your connections. Now, most of your connections are apart from your power and headphone jacks. Your power and headphone jacks are located on the far left for your power and the far right for your headphone jack. And on the back of it is where we've got all our connections. Now, I'm in two minds about the connections at the back. And let's first of all explain why I'm in two minds. If, for example, like now, I can plug all my cables in and the cables can drop at the back of the desk and they're nice and hidden and it looks neater for when I'm filming like this or it looks neater if you're in a desk environment like this all the time and you don't want cables sticking out the side of your laptop and possibly covering the fan takes of this laptop because it's got a lot of fan gates on the side but also on the back but wires are less cumbersome on the back because they'll more likely be dropping out the back. For getting all that aside, why am I finding it annoying? Well. If you've got a USB drive, a thumb drive, and you're plugging this in occasionally, you're going to have to lean over the top of the laptop if you're going to plug it in, you know, halfway through the day. It could possibly do with maybe a USB-C or USB, uh, standard USB-B port on the front or the side of the laptop just for easy access. Just one would be fine, just so you've got quick, easy access to plug something in very quickly. Leaning over the laptop is a bit of a pain in the neck, and it is weirdly difficult to find the ports at the back because they're black and the Tron bar kind of blinds you a little as you're looking for them. My frustrations don't end there. I'm actually a bit disappointed with the amount of ports you get. Now you get two USB-C ports, which are both Thunderbolt 4 enabled, which is fantastic for keeping the machine running up to date because there's all sorts of things you can do like upgrading the graphics cards with an external proper PC graphics card on there in the future when this 3080 starts not kicking out enough power. So that is a great addition. You've also got on there two standard USB ports. You've got one Ethernet port, you've got a HDMI port and a display port. But why am I a little bit annoyed? Well, I opted to get this Alienware mouse because I thought I need a mouse and I want a mouse that will work with the Alienware laptop perfectly and this one should work perfectly. In fact, I thought it won't even need a separate USB Wi-Fi or, you know, communication dongle because it's an Alienware laptop, it's an Alienware mouse. Surely they're using the same Bluetooth chipset that's in the laptop to communicate with this mouse. You're wrong. You have to use the USB that came with this mouse to plug in the back of your laptop. And now I'm down to one USB port, which I need quite a lot because being a YouTuber, I'm often got stuff plugged in like external sound devices, cameras, and all of the peripherals. Now, I could, yes, use a USB-C adapter and have extended ports, but the idea of a laptop is to cut down on the amount of stuff I have to take with me, so it's a little bit annoying. I do wish there was a couple more USB-B and C ports on the back of this laptop. Something else that is actually missing on this laptop when it comes to ports is you have an SD card port, which is absolutely fantastic. Unfortunately, Dell decided to only put a micro SD port in this, so if you're using full-size SD cards, you're going to have to bring a separate adapter with you to read those cards, which is, again, I don't understand why Dell have done it. Looking inside this laptop, there is plenty of room that they could have, could have put a full-size port in and still a mini SD port in. So they could have actually had both or just a full-size port, and then you can bring those easy to take with you adapters for turning a micro SD into a full size SD. What's the performance like? Well, out of the box, I got 11,866 on TimeSpy. And if you're interested in seeing the TimeSpy results, they are down below in the description. I also then updated all the BIOS settings and the drivers and didn't tweak anything else, no overclocking, and I reran the test and I got 11,962. And this is just having the fans on performance and the power on performance. No other chipset changes, no clocking, and no special drivers, just the Alienware drivers that you can download straight from the Alienware update machine. Uh, I'm really impressed with those scores, but I wanted to then take it into a more real world test. So I ran Flight Simulator on it, which at the moment is probably one of the most intensive games you can get. And it performed flawlessly with everything on Ultra on this screen. Now this is only running at 1080, so I haven't got a 4K screen to fully test it on, but I believe once you plug a 4K separate screen in it, 
because this hasn't got a muck switch in and you turn this display off, you should even get even more performance out of the graphics card. So anyone who's got one of these and has done a separate bench test, then please leave that benchmark test below in the comments and I will approve it so everyone else can see it. But I want to take this one step further. So I've done a Microsoft Flight Simulator, but what is this like in VR? Well, I, as people may, may already know, have an Oculus headset. So I programmed this up to run on Oculus and Flight Simulator, and I pretty much have everything cranked up to ultra on VR and that is really impressive really intensive game and this running on VR now there is a small problem with the Intel i7 and i9 11th gen chipsets with VR it can crash and I did a workaround where you basically disable the internet when you launch the game so it's not doing anything in the cloud and that is the small problem that should be fixed shortly so if you are VR gaming in one of these new 11th gen Intel chips, then just be aware there is a short term fix, a hot fix on what you can do to make it work until Intel have released some new drivers to make VR games recognized by this and not crash. However, I bought this machine for editing. So what is it like at Premiere Pro and editing? Well, compared to the old Elite Book, it is like being in a different world. I can edit flawlessly. I can scroll all the way through video footage as I'm, you know, pre-editing recording it which is really graphics intensive i can put loads of filters and all sorts of layers on and still drag and move around without any issues whatsoever it is absolutely flawless now i've not done a full render on a 4k video yet but this video will be done in 4k and rendered in 4k and unless i had a problem with it then it probably was absolutely flawless and i'll leave a comment down below in the description on how long it took to render this entire video in 4K for uploading to YouTube if you are interested. I also think that this will massively improve my editing skills because I can now do more stuff without worrying about my computer being slow and annoying me and adding extra B-roll which used to just take so much time previously on my old laptop. So hopefully you'll all see a massive jump in quality. Now if you're interested in learning more about electric vehicles then make sure you go and follow my channel, click subscribe and click the notification bell. If you want to learn more about the Alienware X17 laptop or X15 series laptops then check Check out Dave over at MashRT, who is the guy who has been really, really helpful when I was buying one of these laptops, who's given me a load of advice and a load of help buying it. And he has a new YouTube channel that he does all about laptops, and he has grown at massive rates. Really, really nice guy. So go and give him a follow. Thank you very, very much for watching this week's video, and I'll see you again next week. Goodbye.